So as part of the discussion on faith begun by Canerod Piper, <clears throat> our other friend Art of Artie's Place mentioned a couple of uh, issues he has with, uh, with the Bible, with God, faith in God. And so I wanted to respond to those. So, hope you see this art. Hope you're doing well. I miss uh, riding along with you in your uh, in your roadway uh, your roadway rambles after uh, after work um, and on the weekends too. Um, but I do appreciate you uh, putting out your daily five every day. I look forward to those. Always interesting. So. Um, please understand, I, I'm not saying anything critical, I'm talking to you as a friend, so please take it that way, um, if, uh, if I say anything that you don't like or don't understand, uh, feel free to contact me at my username, at, uh, msn.com, so it's my, uh, YouTube username at MikeSierraNovember.com and I'm happy to discuss it with you. Actually, for anyone else, um, if we can have a civil discussion or if you have any questions or anything I can clarify, let me know. Um, we're still trying to soak up as much of the sunlight and uh, warm weather left as we can here in Alaska, but uh, I'll get to you as soon as I can. So, I already posed uh, two issues you have with God, with faith, and so I'll start with the easy one first, and that is, you mentioned that you wondered if perhaps the Bible was a hoax, and that, it was written later on by uh, people who just made it all up, and it's just a uh, A fabrication, a fairy tale. Well, for starters, the foundation of my faith and of the Christian faith, the movement that Jesus started, is actually the resurrection of Jesus. So Jesus, when he lived on the earth, he told his followers that he would eventually allow himself to be murdered by the Romans, well, allow himself to be murdered, and then a couple of days later, rise from the dead and be just as alive as anyone ever. And that's precisely what he did. That tomb was empty that Sunday morning. The Jews acknowledged it, the Romans acknowledged it. Um, it's quite implausible that a bunch of uh, fishermen and other blue-collar kinds of guys would overpower the uh, uh, elite guards from the most brutal military on the planet at the time, uh, steal Jesus' body, and then, beyond that, go to their deaths claiming that Jesus actually was alive. That makes no sense. To, to die for a lie, and everyone knows it's a lie, that wouldn't work. So... Jesus' followers, his disciples, his inner circle, they all watched him die. They, they saw him dead. And when he died, they were disillusioned. And they thought he was the promised Messiah. They thought he was God living in a human body. But if he was dead, that couldn't be possible. They didn't go around telling people about all the great sermons Jesus preached or the people he healed or raised from the dead none of that because it didn't matter because he was dead and he was not who they thought he was well then they discovered an empty tomb and subsequently Jesus inner circle his disciples later called the apostles saw him alive they ate breakfast with him on the beach. 
there were hundreds of people in Jerusalem who saw Jesus alive after they had watched him die. And that was their message. After that, they said, um, you know, Jesus, who we saw killed by the Romans at the behest of the corrupt religious leaders, uh, we watched him die and now he's alive. And now we remember that he told us that that would happen, but we had forgotten. It we just went right over our heads. <clears throat> so, you have Jesus followers such as Matthew and John, who were with Jesus, they were part of his inner circle, and they wrote their accounts of his life, his ministry, his death, and his resurrection. We have those that are called the Gospels of uh, Matthew and of John. And then we have other accounts from Luke and Mark who uh, interviewed people who were eyewitnesses. Um, they, they knew people who saw Jesus alive. You have Peter. <clears throat> you have uh, Paul who later had an encounter with uh, Jesus. You have all this uh, eyewitness testimony written uh, by various people that were... Uh, spread throughout uh, the Greek-speaking world, throughout the Mediterranean, through the Roman Empire. Some people would have had, you know, maybe a scrap of one of those uh, documents. They might have had, you know, a complete one and a scrap of another. Um, they were just passed around, but they were considered to be genuine and reliable because of who wrote them because the people who wrote them knew jesus saw him die saw him alive so that gave the followers of jesus they were convinced that those documents were reliable it wasn't until about the year 300 that several writings, I believe 37 different um, uh, books of poetry and law and prophecy and all that from the Hebrew uh, scriptures were bundled together with um, the documents and letters uh, written by early Christians in the first century into what we now call the Bible. And so, again, we don't consider the Bible itself reliable because it is the Bible. It's all the individual writings in the Bible, what I call the New Testament, are reliable because of who wrote them, because they saw Jesus alive. So this is why the I, I can tell you that, yeah, the Bible itself, it was not fabricated. And also, again, to reiterate that the Bible is not the foundation of the Christian faith. And so then we come to your other uh, concern, Art, is uh, why do bad things happen to good people? A question that's been asked probably since uh, the beginning of time. And I wish I could put this in a box and wrap it with a bow and hand it to you, but it's just not that simple. The first thing to know is that every single human being is a sinner. We are fundamentally and inherently flawed and corrupt. Um, this, this notion that human beings are innately good is erroneous. And you said in your video that you try to be a good person, you try to treat people well, but you implied that um, though you try, you sometimes fail, as we all do. Well, 
again, that's because you, as I am, and all of us are, you are a sinner. You are corrupted by sin. And the other thing to note is that you inherently understand the the unfairness and the tragedy um, of suffering in this world. That itself is the imprint of God in you. So the fact that you recognize those things as being undesirable or even evil um, speaks to the fact that you are created by God and that we were made for something better. The other thing to know is that God does love us. He loves you. And he he knows you better than you know yourself, and he loves you more than you can ever comprehend. So, his existence also is far beyond ours and our understanding. Knowing that, and this may sound trite, and but the the suffering, the evil, the pain that God brings into our lives, He does have a purpose for. And it really is um, from a standpoint and motivation of love. Now don't get me wrong, the things that God's put me through, all the misery and the pain and the suffering, I have railed at God uh, with, with every ounce of breath I can muster and all the four-letter words I could think of. Uh, I don't give God a pass, and I'm not saying that you should either, right? He expects us to ask the difficult questions, why the hell do you allow all this stuff? God, God always honors an honest question, but you have to be willing to accept the answer. Human beings were created perfect, and there was no sin, but God gave us free will, and we chose to disobey Him, to go against His will. And now in this fallen world, we all suffer the consequences. But that should actually draw you toward God and not repel you from Him. It may not be what you wanted to hear, it may not be, a, you may consider that a non-answer, but it's a difficult question, like I said, and I'm glad you asked it, I'm glad you posed it. So. Um, that's that's what I can give you. Um, again, let me know if there's uh, more that we could discuss. Anyway, take care, Art. And yeah, I hope you know God's love, joy, and peace today.